Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokos Mystery. This will be part 251. <clears throat> we're continuing with our series, The Kingdom Gospel. This should be part 2. Scripture teaches, at the time of the beginning of sorrows, the gospel of the kingdom of the heavens will be proclaimed. Matthew 24, verse 14. <clears throat> and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, then shall the end come. So you're going to have a tremendous climactic change, radical change. People are going to hear the Lord pronounce a judgment against the whole human race. And then shortly after that, from the heavens are going to be declared the gospel of the kingdom to everybody. Scripture teaches <clears throat> at this time a select group of teachers will arise to teach God's people the doctrines of the gospel of the kingdom. Matthew 24 verse 45 to 47. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? So, from eternity, <clears throat> the Lord has laid out a progression of events that will take place <clears throat> at this time. <clears throat> the judgment will be pronounced, the gospel will be preached, the teachers will arise to give understanding of the principles of the gospel that has been preached <clears throat> to the select group that will be the learners, the recipients of the knowledge of the gospel. Let me quickly ask. Yes. If somebody was looking at the teacher before the beginning of sorrows, they look like us. When they look at that same person after the beginning of sorrows, will they notice any difference in their Definitely. Bizarre. Oh, definitely. Glowing, shining, what would, what would you expect to see? Well, there's not so much the appearance as the action of the individual. Okay. They will exhibit a knowledge. That's the key to the whole situation. They will be knowledgeable of the events that are taking place. Everybody else will be in ignorance. Mm. They haven't been prepared. They haven't been taught. So these will be basically spotlighted, given the ability to proclaim what has been hidden for thousands of years, which is now to be revealed to those that God has selected to hear it. So the person uh, encountering that teacher after the beginning of sorrows will notice in the behavior of that teacher a confidence in being able to explain exactly what's happening and why. Oh, sure. Mm. Yeah. There, there won't be any doubt or hesitancy to those that are <clears throat> desirous of hearing the truth. Now that's just going to be a minority. Because the majority of the human race is going to be at this time under idolatry. Because sure. you have the Luciferian influence sweeping over the earth <clears throat> on one hand. And then you have Israel being gathered back to the land under YHVH. And you're <clears throat> going to have this select group which is the father's creme de la creme, the inheritors of all things, being prepared for all things. Right. <clears throat> Which brings us to the next principle. <clears throat> Scripture teaches, in the time of the end of the age, four, four non-human kingdoms will dominate the Earth's surface and the subterranean regions. These Luciferian kingdoms would dominate 
the fifth kingdom, which is, of course, the kingdom of humanity, the human race. This is what, among other things, will be taught by the teachers. Because people will be in a world in which they have no concept of what's going on. Nobody <coughs> comprehends the true existence of non-humans. Because the powers that be have gone out of their way to make sure that the human race is kept ignorant and everybody else is ignorant of the reality of non-human existence and non-human races. Well, people are going to have to be taught all of this. Understand the different significant groups and <clears throat> their influence in their destiny. Teachers are going to teach all of that. Right. Turn to Daniel, second chapter, verse 40 to 43. Case in point, UFO activity as you're turning. Most UFO activity is seen over water. Okay. Or close to water. Why is that? <clears throat> because <coughs> water entrances basically are the ex entrances to the non human kingdoms in the subterranean regions. They're not going to go down into the land, they're going to go down to the water where they have their trajectories and different things that are established. <clears throat> and there's all sorts of activity taking place in the subterranean regions, under, under the, war, the, the, the Earth's oceans, that the government knows about and have gone under their way to keep people ignorant of. Well, during the time of the beginning of sorrows, all this is going to be revealed. But since, I, I don't know if it's many or few of these mm -hmm. beings are interdimensional beings, mm -hmm. they can go through any element that they like, whether it's water or rock or... Sure, but the beings, the races that inhabit the Earth's interior... The nations? <clears throat> yes. Okay. Are basically, they're superior, but they're basically in a material environment, okay. physical environment. They craft a visible, physical, and so they traverse along similar lines to the human race on the surface. <clears throat> Daniel, the second chapter... Verse 40 to 43. The fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things. And as iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. It's going to break in pieces and bruise human civilization mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in, a, in a very short period of time. It's going to bring it down, stamp it flat, and it will cause it to cease to exist. Where is our source, the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron? The kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as our source, iron mixed with miry clay. So you have two substances, iron and clay. Iron is vastly superior to the clay. The substances he's talking about here are symbolic of the composition of these two elements, these two groupings. Once fragile, uh, very uh, open to uh, being injured, the others highly durable, um, basically um, immovable compared to the clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Why? Because it's going to be an amalgam of human races and non-human races comprising <coughs> life on the surface world. Verse <coughs> 43, where is also iron mixed with miry clay? They, so we have the pronoun they. <laughs> the iron represents <coughs> sentient beings. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Men, and the word there is Adam, it means the human race, which is symbolic of the clay. The seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. So you're going to have the two groups in juxtaposition 
On the surface of the world, the iron dominating the clay. Yes. Okay. I was going to ask you to interpret what we're reading here. Okay. Whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay. So the, heat, the, the iron and the clay is mixed. Okay. Yes. It says, they shall not cleave one to another. So what is the mixing and the, what's the separation between the cleaving and the mixing? <coughs> Societies. You're going to have the establishment. When the fourth kingdom makes its appearance, it's going to fragment what you have here, the human order. And it's going to inter interspace itself with what once was human civilization. So you're going to have a human colony here, dominated by a Luciferian city there. But the two groups will not commingle because the humans cannot mingle with a superior order of beings. Will the Luciferian societies, meaning the brass, the silver, and the gold, intermingle? No. But is that the cleaving? The cleaving is the fact that you have non-human races okay. for the first time. Well, it won't be the first time. It used to be that way. <laughs> Anyhow, the non-human races directly influencing the human okay. race. Okay. Currently, you do not have that. There's separation. The human race thinks it's alone. Mm. Thinks that it's mm. master of its own destiny. So they're calling that mingling. Sure. They'll mingle, but they don't cleave. Yes. Cleave meaning you don't have a, like you would have in a society, say, in over in the Mideast. You have Arabs mixed with Jews and certain, certain you have two cultures intermingling. Oh, they yeah. shop at the same stores right. or they, they go to uh, different places sure. where they come in contact with each other. It's not going to be the case here. Mm. Why? Because the human race is inferior to these iron <clears throat> intelligences. These, these individuals <clears throat> have their own agenda, their own lifestyle, and they would look down at the humans like you would look down at um, an amoeba. Sure. The limitation of the human race, the fragility of the human race. They wouldn't want to spend their time. Why would they spend their time <laughs> commingling with humans? I know that. They're only on the surface because they have to be in the first place. To what degree are the Luciferian races affected by being in this low vibration environment? Oh, tremendously. What does it stop them doing? If, if well, anything. it would it would limit their ability to function the way you ordinarily do, as you see in the scripture here. You see in verse 40, totally iron. They're free to exercise their potential to the fullest. Then it's telling us, iron mixed with miry clay. It's limited now because it's forced to intermingle with an inferior life source. And by virtue of that, it has to make adjustments right. in its own lifestyle. This is not something voluntary. This is the Father's doing. Okay. Okay. That's the clue, which mm -hmm. I hadn't really you know, uh, received before. This is the Father's doing. Yeah. And they they want, don't want to do this. No. Mm. They wanted to. They'd already be here. But they wouldn't. I mean, you, you take a look at the UFO phenomena. You see any UFOs landing, contacting humans, or you know, everybody giving them the time of day? No, they don't want anything to do with the human race because they look at the human race as something that you would look at, uh, 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 view as a leper colony, something you would keep totally distant from. So why don't they wipe them out? They can't. The father wipe them out. White Village wouldn't allow it. So we should understand that every time they do come into, or have come into contact, I should say, past tense, with the human race, is purely to denigrate YHVH, because they can't stand it, destroy humans because they know the Father loves humans. That's it. There's no other reason that they're willing to come into contact with humans. Well, it's not the humans they're even interested in. It's the, the elements of the planet that the humans dominate. But when they, when they um, cause humans to worship them, mm. why would they want the worship of humans if they... Uh, oh, this, yeah, this well, sure, of course, because they take advantage of a lower life form okay. for their own, their fallen beings. So, yeah, they're going to do that. All right. 
but they're not going to spend any time uh, co-mingling gotcha. any more than an advanced the society would co-mingle with an aborigine tribe in the jungle region somewhere. They have their own agenda, their own, they do their own thing, and every so often you get the XY axis crossing because of necessity. But other than that, no. Mm. Let's go on. <clears throat> Drop down to Daniel. Uh, verse 44. Second chapter? Yeah, same chapter. Verse 44. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. And it shall stand forever. This is part of the principles of the kingdom that the teachers are going to be teaching their students. Mm -hmm. The purpose of God's master plan, why things are allowed to take place that pertain to the kingdom, the destiny of those that are going to enter into the kingdom, the destiny of the races, the kingdoms that are surrounding the human order they're going to teach them the whole master plan of God which has never 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 been taught since the time of the Lord Jesus the Lord Jesus spoke one principle the kingdom and he spoke about the principles of the kingdom and he left the apostles to take off where he had left off dealing with the principles of the kingdom they didn't the only one that did was Paul and the other apostles wouldn't accept his gospel. Paul took off where Jesus left off. The Lord says, he's a chosen vessel to me to take my message to the Gentiles and the Jews. And uh, since that time, it hasn't happened. For one basic reason is that nobody understands because they haven't been authorized to teach it. As the scripture tells us in Matthew 24, 45, those who their Lord have made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. We were, well, when we continue this lesson Tuesday, we will see how the revelation has been kept hidden for thousands of years. Nobody's known men or angels. <clears throat> been kept hidden to be released at a specific time. What time? The beginning of sorrows. Whom? To whom? Those that are going to be comprised of the elder group that are going to dominate. 